on into a queue. Let me share the screen. So today we are going to discuss about uh, the section of optics from 11th standard and wave optics from 12th standard. Okay, we can. Okay, optics have been classified in two features. That is first one ray optics and second one that is wave optics ray optics discusses with the different phenomena such as reflection refraction and so on whereas wave optics discusses with diffraction interference polarization etc okay so let us discuss the first point very basic that is ray optics These are the two contents. The first one, refraction of light, laws of refraction, principle of reversibility of light, refraction through a parallel slab, refraction through a compound slab, apparent depth of a liquid, total internal reflection, refraction at spherical surfaces, just the introduction, then assumptions and sign conventions. Refraction at convex and concave surfaces, lens makers formula, first and second principle focus, thin lens equation, and linear magnification. First of all, I'm simply revising the concept in brief so that we can remember these formulas and theory, and we will be able to solve number of problems. Okay? This is the first section that is ray optics and second section that will be delivered today itself that is of wave optics. The first point refraction of light. What is refraction? Refraction is the phenomena of change in the path of light as it travels from one medium to another. When the ray of light is incident obliquely means when the ray of light is going to be incident on a denser medium from rarer media then part of the light is going to be reflected and remaining amount of energy is to be refracted and is shown here it can also be defined as the phenomena of change in speed of light from one medium to another Okay, so here you can see ray of light is going to be incident on denser media, separating two mediums, rare earth media and denser media. Then, obviously, when ray of light is going to be incident by making angle of incidence I, then the light is going to be reflecting, refracting. So, during the refraction, Instead of traveling in a straight line path, it is simply bending towards the normal. This is boundary. This one is boundary. And this one is normal. Normal to boundary. Okay. So, what you are observing? Angle I is always greater than angle R. So this is the normal, this one is boundary, separating two media, that is rarer and denser. Okay. What is the law of refraction? Law says the incident ray, this ray, normal, and the refracting surface at the point of incidence and the refracted ray all should lie in same plane. Okay. Incident ray, normal and refracted ray. They should lie in same plane. That is first law. Then second law for a given pair of media, 
and for light of given epsilon, the ratio of the sign of the angle of incidence to the sign of angle of refraction is a constant. It is called Snell's law. Here you can observe that if this medium is not present, then what happens to this incident ray? That is simply this ray of light can simply traverse in a straight line path. But due to the presence of any denser media of refractive index mu, what happens? It is simply bending towards the normal. So obviously, angle I is greater than angle R. And reverse is the case. Then when the ray of light is entering from denser media, this is denser media, into rarer media, then what happens? The light bends away from the normal. Light bends away from the normal. Okay. So this phenomenon is called refraction and this is next law. What is mu? Mu is a refractive index of a denser medium. Hmm? How it is given? Sin i upon sin r equals to mu. That means if you are known, known with angle i and angle r, then what you can find? You can find refractive index of refractive index of denser medium. Next, the constant mu is called refractive index of the medium. I is angle of incidence and R is angle of refraction. So please, you should note this Snell's law as mu equals to sine I upon sine R. It is there. Okay. What is I? I is angle of incidence. R is angle of refraction. Okay. Next point, main points here, mu is optically rarer media. Mu of optically rarer media is lower and that of a denser medium is higher. Obviously, rarer means in general, we are using air where mu equals to 1. But instead of air, if you are using glass, oil as the denser medium, then mu is greater than 1. For liquid, mu equals to 1.3, 1.33. For glass, it may vary like 1.5, etc. How this mu has to be defined? Mu is C upon V. What is C? Velocity of light. What is V? V is the velocity of light in the denser medium. Okay. Higher is the velocity, lower is the refractive index of material. Okay. And lower is the velocity, then obviously higher will be the refractive index. That you should remember. Mu of denser medium with respect to rarer medium is more than 1. And that of rarer medium with respect to denser medium is less than 1. Okay. Next point. In refraction, the velocity and the length of light change, obviously. Okay, what is velocity? Velocity is simply the distance traveled per unit time. Distance traveled per unit time, that is velocity. Okay, so obviously the distance covered by the ray of light is going to change. In refraction, the frequency and phase of light do not change. These are some tips you to, to remember. Next one, mu when it passes through air into a medium, then velocity of C is the velocity of light in the presence of air upon velocity of light in the presence of material media. And also the same equation we can write in terms of wavelength. Wavelength covered by incidentally in the presence of air upon hmm, distance covered in the presence of medium. So it is given. Principle of reversibility. What happens to when the direction of the path traveled by ray of light changes? Then what happens? Tells here. 
सॉरी चेकिया When the ray of light simply travels from denser media into rarer media, then what happens? The ray of light is simply bending away from the normal. Okay, so it seems here. Now, how it affects not how it affects on Snell's law that we will check. When the ray of light is entering from A. As the medium into B as denser medium, then Snell's law is given by sine I upon sine R. That's fine. When opposite is the case, then how it changes? The refractive index of material when the ray of light enters from B section, that is of denser medium into rarer medium, then how that Snell's law is changing? That is. One upon this particular. That means sine R upon sine I. Okay. Then product is given, or a mu of B into mu when it changes when the ray of light is entering from denser into rarer equals to one. If a ray of light after suffering any amount of reflections and or refractions has its path reversed at any stage it travels back to the source along the same path in the opposite direction this is called principle of reversibility of light if a ray of light after suffering any number of reflections and again same path is to be is to be traveled by the ray of light in a reverse manner then it can reach to the source by following above snell's law a natural consequence of the principle of reversibility is that the image and object positions can be interchanged these positions are called conjugate positions next one refraction through a parallel slab let us check here when the ray of light is entering from rarer into denser medium okay if this medium is not present then it can simply travel you know straight line path but if there is a difference in refractive index hmm, then what happens it this incident ray has to refract hmm, has to refract that means it bends towards the normal here is the normal Because now we've seen all these situations. Okay, when the ray of light is entering from rarer to denser, then what we are getting? Sine I one upon sine R one into sine I two upon sine R two. There is sine I two because the ray of light is simply traveling from denser media into rarer media. Okay. So sine I two upon sine R two equals to one. Obviously, it implies is that I one equals to R two and I two equals to R one. Since I one is not equals to R one, since I one is not equals to R one and I two is not equals to R two. Okay. Next lateral shift. How much is the lateral shift taking place? Then special case if I one is very small, then R one is again small, 
and that is sine of i1 minus r1 equals to i1 minus r1 and cos of r1 equals to 1. Okay, because as we know that if theta is very small, then sine theta, if theta is very small, then sine theta is to be considered as theta. We know this fact. Okay, so then R1 is very small. So lateral shift taking place. Lateral shift means what? It is the path difference. Simply. Okay. So y equals to t into i1 minus r1 and y equals to in terms of i1 r1 it is expressed. Then refraction through a compound slab. We are going in a very fast manner. We can just uh, um, revise in the concept that you have covered in 11 standard and how it is continued in 12 standard. Okay. So these are the concepts we have studied. Just now you have seen this diagram. Okay. Compound slab means what? If here is there, here is tensor. And again, here is tensor media. And then there are media. Okay. Then what happens to the path of ray of light? And the ray of light is passing from rare into denser media. Then angle I1 is greater than angle R1. Right? Again, at this place, here is the R1, here is also R1. The ray of light is simply traveling from denser into again denser medium. Okay. But here, what you can see that uh, you see, you see, yeah, this condition you have to remember. Okay, mu c is greater than mu b, means the refractive index of this medium is greater as compared to refractive index of mu b. Then only this situation occurs. Okay, means let us suppose here is air, here is. Um, like uh, glass huh? and here it's like uh, sorry here is liquid and liquid such as water and here it's glass material suppose okay then that will act as a compound slab okay so mu b with respect to this as the media of this refractive disk Manje, mu b ani mu a and when we compare it, we can see that mu b is a tensor medium as compared to mu a. But when we compare it, we can see that the refractive index is a refractive index as compared to the refractive index. Manje, with respect to this medium, this medium is supposed to be rarer medium. The actual comparison with the refractive index is less than or less than. And in the first case, the ray of light is from entering from rare media into denser media. For this condition, condition you should remember that is mu c must be greater than mu b. Then only this happens. Okay? So it is explained. Then, okay. This is to be used in anti-reflection coating, this particular compound slab, where rare earth media, then thin film to be coated on the substrate as the glass material. Okay, so how that is to be used for anti-reflection coating or non-reflecting coating that we can see afterwards. Next one. Apparent depth of the liquid. You also this phenomena. When the liquid is kept in a beaker, then the situation is like this. The ray of light is going to enter normally. And from this location, the light is going to be reflected and travels in this manner. Okay. 
then what happens to the smith's law smith's law with respect to this medium that is when the ray of light is entering from denser into air this is the angle of incidence here is the angle of incidence okay it will light reflect to the air and here and it will normal incidentally and it will reflect to the air okay so this is the angle of incidence and at this place when it reaches at the surface okay when it reaches at the surface again what you can observe that here is the change of media and that's why due to the change of media this part of the ray of light is going to change this is the normal so obviously when the ray of light travels from denser media into air media then the ray of light is simply bending away from the normal okay the ray it is medium the difference nasta tar ha part also zarol pude gelasta straight line mate theek hai but it changes the media and hence what you are observing that angle of refraction is greater as compared to angle of incidence okay then how it can be calculated hr upon h a height okay height when the ray of light present here uh, real height okay real height you may call or real depth versus apparent depth okay so apparent depth of a number of immiscible liquids that is going to be covered like this apparent shift hmm? next what the points you should remember if the observer is in rare media and the object is in denser media if the observer is in rare media and the object is just like here let us put your observer is here that this observer is watching for this ray of light coming out of the Uh, liquid out of the beaker. Huh? If the observer is in rare media and the object is in denser media, then H A that is apparent depth is less than real depth. Okay. Next, if the observer is in denser media and the object is in rare media, then apparent height is greater than real height means the grandfather the example to a bird the fish appears to be nearer than actual depth na jhada varcha pakshi asto to rarer medium madhe asto ani fish tumcha jo asto to water madhe asto thik hai so tya case madhe tya pakshala asa vatat asto ki fish ha khup jawal hai tacha pasun ओके पण त्याची ऍक्च्युअल डेप्थ ही जास्त असते आणि अपरेंट डेप्थ ही कमी असते ठीक आहे दॅट इज द केस वेअर एज टू अ फिश फिशला काय वाटत अरे पक्षी आपल्यापासून खूप लांब आहे हा बर्डला वाटत फिश आपल्यापासून खूप जवळ आहे फिशला वाटत बर्ड हा आपल्यापासून खूप लांब आहे ओके सो दॅट इज द केस दॅट इज अपरेंट डेप्थ अँड ऍक्च्युअल अपरेंट डेप्थ अँड रिअल डेप्थ real depth means actual height and apparent depth means abhasi you may call okay so that's the case now the next one up now that is total internal reflection we have seen we are known with reflection phenomena refraction phenomena now the point is there of total internal reflection that is the basic principle of optical fibers in communication okay what is total internal reflection so it is simply tir it is the phenomena of complete reflection of light back into the same medium for angle of incidence greater than critical angle of that medium okay total internal reflection mujhe kya तर जेव्हा रे ऑफ लाईट हा रेर मधून डेन्सर मध्ये जातो तेव्हा डेन्सर मधून जेव्हा रेर मध्ये येतो 
तेव्हा अँगल ऑफ इन्सिडन्स हा जास्त असतो ॲज कम्पेअर टू अँगल ऑफ रिफ्रॅक्शन सॉरी आय एम सॉरी वेन द रे ऑफ लाईट इज गोईंग टू बी गोईंग टू बी एंटरिंग फ्रॉम डेन्सर मीडिया इन टू रेअर मीडिया देन अँगल ऑफ आर इज ग्रेटर ॲज कम्पेअर टू अँगल ऑफ इन्सिडन्स बट ॲज यू गोन इन्क्रीजिंग the angle of incidence made with the normal then gradually the angle of angle of refraction goes on increasing and at a particular angle angle r becomes equals to 90 degree and if still you are increasing the angle of incidence made by ray of light greater than critical angle then where the path will be there that the path will simply reflecting back into the same medium okay what is ic ic is the critical angle at which angle r becomes equals to 90 degree okay but if still you are increasing this angle of incidence greater than i is greater than ic critical angle then what happens to the path of ray of light instead of traveling anywhere it simply went into the denser medium okay so this phenomena is called total internal reflection means no light can escape out of this out of this denser medium no light can escape out of the denser medium from where it is just launching from in that medium itself the ray of light is going to reflect back okay so this phenomena is called total internal reflection let us check here this is the ray of light entry from rare media into denser media then part of it is reflecting following this path so this is angle of incidence initially this angle is small very small so this angle is angle of refraction okay this is angle of incidence this is angle of refraction obviously when the path of ray of light is traveling from denser media into rare media angle r is greater than angle i this you have to remember okay so gradually if you go on increasing this angle of incidence now let us suppose that it is i1 this is i2 this is r1 this is r2 okay then obviously you will find here since i1 is greater than i2 r1 is less than r2 that means r2 is also greater than r1 okay again okay, still if you go on increasing this angle of incidence made by the ray of light then at particular angle of incidence what happens this angle r angle r equals to 90 degree it simply traverses along the boundary separating two media here are two media this one is rarer media this one is denser media okay it simply traverses over the boundary over the surface okay so that angle r equals to 90 degree and that angle that angle of incidence made by the ray of light with the normal is called critical angle and if still you are increasing that hmm, then you will find total internal reflection can take place okay this is to be used in optical fibers in communication okay what are the conditions of total internal reflection the first one incident ray must be in optically denser medium obviously the ray of light has to travel from denser medium into rarer medium next one the angle of incidence in denser medium must be greater then the critical angle for the pair of media in contact means this is the condition 
that I should be greater than I see. Okay. Next, relation between critical angle and refractive index. What is critical angle? Critical angle of incidence is, is that that angle of incidence at which angle R becomes equal to 90 degree. Okay. When I equals to I C, huh? angle R equals to 90 degree. Obviously. Okay. So critical angle. Okay. Critical angle is the angle of incidence in the denser medium for which the angle of refraction in the rare earth media is 90 degree. Obviously. In short, we are remembering if I is equals to IC. If I is equals to IC, then angle R equals to 90 degree. Okay. So let us define Snell's law. The ray of light is entering from denser media into rare media, glass and air. And that's why Snell's law is just changing how it, how it is affecting. That is, that will be sin i upon sin r equals to sin i is to be replaced by ic and it's a sin 90 because angle r equals to 90 degree okay equals to sin of ic equals to sin of ic okay or when the ray of light is entering from air into glass then how it is changing that is one upon new G A. Sorry, new when the ray of light enters from glass into glass into air. Okay. Huh. Here is one correction I am observing when the ray of light is entering from glass into air then modification in the snake's law is observed how it is that that is mu g into glass equals to sine r huh? sine r upon sine i but sine r equals to sine 90 sine r equals to sine 90 and sine i equals to ic sine i equals to ic okay and sine 0, 0, but sine 90 is 1, and therefore this formula is sine of IC. There is some mistake in just having the substitution, but we have the concept that when the ray of light is entering from rare earth media into denser media, then Snell's law is simply sine I upon sine R. But when the ray of light is entering from denser into rare earth, then it is simply changing as inverse of inverse of okay? that means sine r upon sine i sine 90 upon sine of i c that that means the refractive index of glass can be determined by using or by knowing this critical angle okay so what is the formula that one upon sine I see. Next. That means red color has maximum value of critical angle and violet color has minimum value of critical angle. Uh, okay, let me let me define that red color is having wavelength of 6500 Armstrong unit okay yellow color something 5 5893 Armstrong unit okay then green color may be having some 5500 Armstrong unit blue color again less less than this value that is uh, 5500 then 4,000 or simply Jupiter is having 4,000 approximation. Okay. So, 4,900 and violet color is having the value that is average. Huh? Average of it is 4,000 
make small triangles with top principal axis. The aperture, diameter of core surface is small. Then as per new Cartesian, there are sign conventions we find. The first incident ray is taken from left to right. All the distances are measured from the pole of refracting surface. The distance measured along the direction of incident ray are taken positive and against the incident ray taken are negative. Okay. These are some sign conventions. All the distances from the pole of the refracting surface. Okay. The distances measured along the direction of incident ray are taken positive and against the incident ray are taken negative. Obviously, you are better known. You have solved a number of problems in 11th standard based on the sign convention coordinate system. Next, refraction at convex con convex surface from rarer media to denser media. Okay. Now just see. When the ray of light is simply entering along the principal axis, it can cover and come here in the form of a real image. Then when the ray of light is entering like this, this is a normal to this convex surface. Hmm? Very small portion on the on the sphere, very small portion on the sphere is to be treated as a straight line. So this is a normal to this particular surface and the ray of light is just entering by making certain angle of incidence with the normal. Hmm? Then it is simply reflecting like this. This is angle of incidence. This one is angle of refraction. Here is the normal. Okay. Okay. See here. This is the radius of curvature of this convex lens. This is the distance from point source to the lens. And this is the distance from lens to the screen, you may call. The refractive index of this medium is rarer. The refractive index of convex surface is mu2. How this we can explain when the ray of light is simply reaching here and it tries to enter into the denser medium. If the denser medium is not present, it will simply traverse in a straight line path. But due to the presence of this denser medium, it is simply refracting. So this angle of refraction R is there. Again, the ray of light is reaching here at this place. Okay. So what happens? That is, uh, some angle is made by the ray of light. Now, from the geometry, you are getting different parameters. That angle I equals to angle I equals to alpha plus gamma. Gamma equals to angle R plus beta. Therefore, angle R equals to gamma minus beta. Obviously, as shown in the diagram, it is very clear. Then what is tan alpha? So tan alpha equals to MA. What is MA? This is MA. Huh? And what is MO? Let's check. Good. Get here down. In this triangle, OAM, hmm? what you are getting? This is alpha. Hmm? Tan alpha will be opposite side upon adjacent side. So, obviously, AM or MA upon OM hmm? or alpha equals to MA upon MO. Then, tan beta, tan beta equals to MA upon M A upon M R, obviously. Okay, so tan gamma, where is that gamma? Here is the gamma. Hmm? Angle made by normal with this normal. Okay, it is this surface has surface upon the plane surface. It's hmm? angle alpha. Okay, so it is has C and this is a normal angle made by this normal with. 
म्हणजे इथला नॉर्मल आणि इथला नॉर्मल जर आपण एक्सटेंड केला तर ते येतो इथे येतो अँड दॅट इज टॅन गॅमा इक्वल्स टू एम ए अपॉन एम सी सो जस्ट ट्राय टू अंडरस्टँड then according to snell's law sign i upon sign r equals to refractive index of denser medium upon refractive index of rarer medium because the ray of light is entering from rarer media into denser media okay that means i upon r equals to mu2 upon mu1 or mu1 i equals to mu2 r substituting i r alpha beta gamma and replacing m by p and rearranging okay what you are getting mu1 upon p o plus mu2 upon p i this take the diagram mu1 upon p o plus mu2 upon p i equals to mu2 mu2 minus mu1 upon pc now i apply the sign convolution we are simply knowing these values op equals to u minus u because the light is entering from rarer media into denser media so it will be a positive now we are just measuring the distance from p to o okay so it's a negative minus u pi plus v which there is p i p is here and i is here the ray of light is entering from rarer into denser so obviously there is plus p c equals to radius of curvature of this convex surface now after substitution you can find here that mu1 upon minus u plus mu2 upon p equals to mu2 minus mu1 okay upon r so this all about refraction at convex surface now again refraction at convex surface regarding virtual image the same equations we are writing and we are reaching up to the um, what we are calling eight minute um, lens maker equation we are reaching up to the lens maker equation and based on this lens maker equation the questions are likely to be asked for the you know see the question paper what is what is lens maker equation lens maker equation states that and the thing we are looking when upon p this is lens maker equation one upon p minus one upon u equals to mu2 minus mu1 upon u1 into bracket one upon r1 minus one upon r2 this is useful equation you have to remember to solve number of examples okay so that is exactly the position when the object is kept at infinity the image is formed at the principal focus that is when u equals to minus infinity v equals to plus f what is f f is the focal length of the convex lens when v equals to plus f hmm, we means what distance from distance from center of convex at convex to the screen hmm, v equals to focal length ye tum tumhala sir actually image baghaychi asel तर त्याच्यासाठी आपल्याला स्क्रीन तिथे ठेवली पाहिजे तर स्क्रीन आणि सी मधला डिस्टन्स दॅट इज द फी यु इक्वल्स टू मायनस इन्फिनिटी जर तुमचं ऑब्जेक्ट हे मायनस इन्फिनिटी डिस्टन्सला असेल तर वन अपॉन एफ इक्वल्स टू न्यू मायनस वन इन टू वन अपॉन आर वन मायनस वन अपॉन आर टू दॅट इज कॉल्ड लेन्स मेकर्स फॉर्म्युला सो यू कॅन सिम्पली फाईंड simply find here either of the parameter at the focal plane or the distance the distance of the screen or exactly the object is kept at what distance that you can find okay
Okay. Then first principal focus. This is also the important concept that what do you mean by first principal focus and second principal focus? Now see here, if this is spherical wavefront or cylindrical wavefront, then what happens when it's simply going to be incident on this convex lens? Okay, this convex lens is having the focal length as f. Okay. So when this ray of light is entering into the convex lens, then we can obtain the plane parallel wavefront. We can obtain plane parallel wavefront. Okay, so what is written? First principle focus is the point of the principal axis. Point on the principal axis of the lens at which if an object is placed, the image would be formed at infinity. Okay. Now, second principle focus. Second principle focus is the point on the principal axis of the lens. Then second principle focus is the point on the principal axis of the lens at which the image is formed, which is that second principle focus. Yeah. This is for first principle focus, and this one is second principle focus. How it is defined? Simply remember these diagrams, no need to just uh, remembering the definitions. Okay. So, second principle focus the point on the principal axis of the lens at which the image is formed. When the object is kept at infinity, okay. when the objects are infinity large, say, and if the person in a rigid is a convex lens, they are able to focus at f2 and opposite is the case here when the spherical wavefront is allowed to pass through a convex lens then we are getting a plane parallel wavefront okay so this is all about the first part in lens formula hmm? this is really this is what will be in fact magnification linear magnification produced by the lens is defined as magnification direction you know, what is the linear magnification produced by a lens is defined as the ratio of the size of the image to the size of the object. Magnification is to be defined as the actual actual size. So, it uh, original size. Are you another Linear magnification produced by a lens is defined as the ratio of size of the image to the size of the object. Okay. So it is defined. We are covering these points. More of faster. I current. After I will see the slide. If you go, wait a minute. One extra question. I don't think question three. I just want to ask you something. Okay, now next one. Refraction through a prism. Expression of refractive index of prism. Dispersion. These are the contents. Angular dispersion and dispersive power. Hello? Hello? 
am I audible? Hello? Hello? Hello, ma'am. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Hello. I quit. Ho ye tai ko. Hello. Ha madam. Hello. Hello. It is Ho I quit. Hello, I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, no. Next aspect. Next aspect is refraction source of prism. Expression for refractive effects of a prism. Dispersion. Angular dispersion and dispersive power, blue color of the sky, red color of the sun, blue color of the sky and red color of the sun, compound microscope, astronomical telescope, astronomical telescope, Newtonian telescope, and resolving power of microscope and telescope. Okay, so we are going thoroughly, not in detail, because all we your answer for the theory examination. So, whatever is important from point of view of basic information to solve number of problems based on these two topics, that is optics and wave optics. Okay. So, here is the prism. You are better handled for this prism and then the experiment also. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What is important? That is the phenomenon of dispersion. What is the phenomenon of dispersion? That is when the white light is going to be incident on this prism. It is going to be spread or dispersed into seven different colors. Okay. So I'm not going in detail for this. Yeah. You should remember this. In this quadrilateral APOQ, what is that? A P O Q. Hmm? O P O Q. A plus O equals to A plus O equals to 180 degree. Since N1 and N2 are normal. In triangle OPQ, OPQ. Aja Marika has the triangle A plus angle O equals to 180 degree. In general, OPQ, let us find OPQ. OPQ. Again, what you'll be getting? This is angle R, this angle R. Obviously, angle R plus angle R, that is angle R1 plus R2 plus O equals to 180 degree. In general, BPQ. BPQ. 
okay so what you are observing data hmm? angle of deviation what is data data is angle of deviation okay so it is expressed in terms of as per the geometry delta i equals to i minus r1 plus e minus r2 okay and you will remember this equation when the light is going to be passing from rarer media into denser media as a prism due to the construction of this prism how it affecting on this particular delta that is angle of deviation as i plus e i plus e equals to a plus delta i plus e equals to angle a plus delta sum of angle of incidence and angle of emergence this angle of incidence this is angle of emergence sum of angle of incidence and angle of emergence is equal to the sum of angle of prism sum of angle of prism and angle of deviation the sentence you have to remember this formula you have to remember okay now next one Okay, this formula also you please note down. Hmm? Variation of angle of deviation with angle of incidence. When an angle of incidence increases, when angle of incidence increases, the angle of deviation decreases. Okay, at a particular value of the angle of incidence, the angle of deviation becomes minimum and is called angle of minimum deviation. This is the angle of minimum deviation. Okay, so at the angle of minimum deviation, I equals to E. That is angle of incidence equals to angle of emergence. And R1 equals to R2 equals to R. After minimum deviation, angle of deviation increases with angle of incidence. Okay, so we are able to find the refractive index of denser media by knowing angle of deviation angle of the prism right by this method that is mu equals to this important formula make it star and note it so mu equals to sine of a plus beta m upon 2 upon sine of a by 2 so this is one more formula that angle of deviation must be equals to angle of the prism into mu minus 1 Okay, then dispersion. Just now I have explained you that dispersion of white light through prism. When the white light is going to be incident on a prism, that white light is going to be dispersed, separated into seven different colors, ranging from red color, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Each is having its own frequency, its own wavelength, and its own energy. Causes of dispersion, it is there. Now, next one. So, they are defined here angular dispersion. The dispersion means what? Separation of the colors, separation of the colors when the white light is going to be incident on of the example. Now, what is angular dispersion? The difference difference in the deviations suffered by two colors in passing through a prism gives the angular dispersion. Okay, so how it is defined? Angular dispersion is the rate, the angle between emergent rays of any two colors is called angular dispersion. Okay, it is the rate of change of angle of deviation with wavelength rate of change of angular deviation with respect to uh, d lambda. Okay. Now next. Dispersive power is defined. How it is defined? The dispersive power of the material. dispersion Angle of dispersion Dispersive power the twelve problems 
थोडस कठीण वाटतंय पण हे सगळे फॉर्म्युलेट तुम्हाला लक्षात ठेवणं गरजेचं आहे ही थिअरी माहित असणं गरजेचं आहे ठीक आहे सो डिस्पर्सिव्ह पॉवर इट इज डिफाइंड ऍज रेशो ऑफ अँग्युलर डिस्पर्शन फॉर दोज टू कलर्स टू द मेन डेफिएशन प्रोड्यूस बाय द प्रिझम ठीक आहे सो ओमेगा इज इक्वल टू डेफिएशन फॉर व्हायलेट कलर मायनस डेफिएशन फॉर रेड कलर अपॉन अँगल ऑफ डेफिएशन ठीक आहे सो स्कॅटिंग ऑफ लाईट ब्लू कलर ऑफ द स्काय अँड रेडिश अपियरन्स ऑफ द सन ऍट सन राईज अँड सनसेट द एक्सप्लेनेशन इज गिव्हन हिअर ठीक आहे यू जस्ट यू मे टेक द स्क्रीनशॉट अँड यु रीड इट इट्स अ थिरॉटिकल नेक्स्ट वन दिस द कन्स्ट्रक्शन ऑफ ॲस्ट्रॉनॉमिकल टेलिस्कोप how the magnification series magnification parameter is magne- magnification parameter is going to change for different types of telescopes that we are trying to understood angular magnification or magnifying power of a telescope in normal adjustment is the ratio of angle subtended with the image at the eye as seen to the telescope okay so the magnification hmm, f0 plus fe is called the length of the telescope in normal adjustment okay so here this formula you have to remember next astronomical telescope construction is given astronomical telescope again the formula is modified in terms of f of e d hmm? dk so focal length of objective must be greater than that of ip for larger magnifying power so this sentence you should remember this theory you should remember focal length of objective must be greater focal length of objective must be greater than that of eyepiece for larger magnifying power okay this is newtonian telescope now there is a difference in between magnification and resolving power okay magnification is simply increase in the image of an object by using any lens system okay lens system could be apta kahi hi tumhi that kani optical media cha use karun jo actual size asto tala magnify karna tala manta magnification ani resolving power manje kay tar javar javar cha ja spectral lines astat tanna separate karna okay again that can be done with the help of this optical media okay so just like telescope diffraction rating are to be used to observe the resolution of the spectral lines okay ma resolving power manje kay ta resolving power manje javar javar cha spectral lines astat ani ta distant place la astat khup lamb astat त्यांना सेपरेट करणं ठीक आहे दॅट इज द जॉब ऑफ रिझॉल्विंग पॉवर ऑर मिनिंग ऑफ रिझॉल्विंग पॉवर ॲबिलिटी ऑफ द ऑप्टिकल इन्स्ट्रुमेंट ॲबिलिटी ऑफ द ऑप्टिकल ऑप्टिकल इन्स्ट्रुमेंट टू सेपरेट द टू डिफरंट ऑब्जेक्ट विच आर ॲट डिस्टंट लोकेशन ठीक आहे दॅट इज कॉल्ड रिझॉल्विंग पॉवर there are different instruments like microscope diffraction rating or just now you have seen for telescope okay you just clear the difference in between magnification and resolving power okay magnification means original size he magnify karun karna and resolution means the kind the jats zawal zawal start j objects zawal zawal start udaharnarth aapla telescope cha vapar karayche ani akashamade j डिस्टंट लोकेशनला जे स्टार्स आपल्याला इथून दिसताना खूप जवळ दिसतात पण ऍक्च्युली ते खूप सेपरेट असतात 
आणि ते फ्रेशन करून बघणं त्याच्यासाठी आपण जे डिव्हाइस वापरतो त्यातला एक प्रकार म्हणजे तर तुमचं टेलिस्कोप ठीक आहे दॅट इज द रिझन्स द रिझॉल्विंग पॉवर ऑफ मायक्रोस्कोप इज डिफाइंड ऍज द रेसिप्रोकल ऑफ द डिस्टन्स बिटवीन टू ऑब्जेक्ट्स विच कॅन बी जस्ट रिझॉल्व एन सीन थ्रू द मायक्रोस्कोप आता त्यांनी इथे फॉर्म्युला दिला आहे यू मे रिमेंबर दिस Resolving power equals to one phone, delta D, that is two mu sin theta phone, lambda. Resolving power depends on wavelength, refractive index of medium, half angle of the phone of light from one of the object. Okay. Right. Then, resolving power of a telescope. How it is defined? Resolving power of a telescope is defined as the reciprocal of the smallest angular separation, smallest angular separation between two distant objects. Don't start set, then you have the distance, you have the distance, you have the distance, but you have the distance, angle is low. Okay, that is called uh, <coughs> angular separation. The resolving power of a telescope is defined as the reciprocal of the smallest angular separation between two distant objects whose images are seen separately. So resolving power is simply in terms of that angular separation, one upon d theta, and it is to be expressed as a upon 1.22 lambda. Obviously, direction you have studied, you simply have to remember this formula. So resolving power depends on wavelength lambda and diameter of the objective. Okay, ja object, ja objectives na the separate of correct surface. Objects na. So resolving power depends on wavelength lambda and diameter of objective A. Next. Okay. So. In today's picture, we have simply considered the different phenomena, different equations based on ray optics. In the next lecture, we will continue and solve the number of problems based on these two topics, optics and wave optics. What is the difference in between them? That uh, optics, ray optics is the part where geometrical or linear propagation of the ray of light is to be discussed. By using, by using this concept, you are, you are trying to explain um, the propagation of light across a medium, then how it affects on uh, reflection, refraction, mirrors, right? Then how it affects on apparent depth, actual depth okay so then after that magnification resolving over okay so that we have covered now in the next lecture we are going to talk about this wave optics where we will be discussing different phenomena like interference diffraction what is the difference between interference and diffraction along with the concept of hygiene's principle. What is the hygiene's principle? Huh? What is the source of secondary reflects? Then what are the important conditions to observe the interference pattern? Okay, in order to observe the interference pattern or diffraction phenomena, what are the conditions required? Then after that, we will be discussing about Young's double slit experiment, then by prism experiment, and what is the reason be, be, behind the formation of the colors. Again, in addition to those, we will be discussing uh, the condition for maxima and minima of intensity. So the first part, electromagnetic wave, then wave front, then hygiene's principle, the next one, Reflection of light used on hygiene's principle. This this topic is very important. Okay, third remember. Then refraction of light based on hygiene's principle, behavior of wavefront in mirror, lens, and prism, 
then coherent forces, what is the meaning of that, then interference, diffraction, polarization, okay? Then Young's double slit experiment, biprism experiment, and colors in film terms. So these points we will be covering. And after that, after that, we will discuss these types of problems. Yeah. Types of problems. Okay. This is the first problem that is in the fraction experiment for a from a single slit, the angular width of the central maxima does not depend on. So you should have the basic information that what is the condition of minimum of intensity, maximum of intensity, and whether it is dependent on wavelength or slit width and so on. Okay. So answers are here that we can continue for the next lecture. We can until that. Yeah, I don't know. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So it's a bit problems of one. They talk and view of pixel topic device cover. Already all these points you have covered, but it is necessary to necessary to revise the concept and then only you will be able to solve the number of problems. Uh, so just continue for the first point of wave optics. What is electromagnetic wave? One of my colleagues, that is Professor Mullah Sir, has explained the information about the electromagnetic wave. So what is there in electromagnetic wave? Variation in both electric and magnetic fields occur simultaneously. Therefore, they attain their maximum minima at the same place and at the same time. When the light is going to be propagating, then electric field component and magnetic field component are varying or propagating mutually in a mutually perpendicular to each other. This is magnetic field component, this is electric field component, and this is the direction of propagation of the wave. This is the direction of propagation of the wave along x-axis. The direction of the electric field intensities along y-axis and the direction of the magnetic field is along third axis. Okay, so uh, this is the information you have collected related with the electromagnetic wave. So variation in both electric and magnetic field occurs simultaneously. Therefore, they attain their maximum minimum. The direction of electric and magnetic fields, just now I explained, the direction of electric and magnetic fields are mutually perpendicular to each other and as well as the direction of propagation of the wave. This is the direction of propagation of the wave. Okay. And both these components, one of it, one of the components related with the electric field is along y-axis and magnetic field is along z-axis, which are mutually perpendicular to each other. Next point, the speed of electromagnetic wave depends entirely on the electric and magnetic properties of the medium in which the wave travels and not on the amplitudes of their variations. Okay? Wave is propagating along x-axis with the speed of t equals to 1 upon square root of mu zero into epsilon zero permittivity and permeability. Hmm? Mu permittivity of free space, epsilon permeability. Okay. So for discussion of optical property of electromagnetic wave, more significance is given to electric field E. 
therefore electric field is is called light vector next what is the concept of wave front jeva ekadi wave thi originate hoti hai source kadun tyaela tyacha pasun wave front generate hoto there are different wave front such as spherical wave front cylindrical wave front plane wave front a wave wave like is apan wave che definition kashi kiti very simply the oscillatory disturbance traveling through the medium wave is simply an oscillatory disturbance traveling through a medium from the original source energy is going to be propagating from one point to the another म्हणजे एनर्जी ट्रान्सफर केली जाते पण मेडियम मध्ये जे पार्टिकल्स असतात ते मात्र त्यांची पोझिशन चेंज करत नाहीत ओके सो दॅट वेबलेट इज द पॉइंट ऑफ डिस्टर्बन्स ड्यू टू प्रोपगेशन ऑफ लाईट अ वेव फ्रंट इज द लोकस ऑफ पॉइंट इट इज द सरफेस अ वेव फ्रंट इज द लोकस ऑफ पॉइंट हॅविंग द सेम फेज ऑफ ऑसिलेशन म्हणजे एका वेवच क्रॅस आणि दुसऱ्या वेवच ट्रफ असं वेव फ्रंटला होत नाही तर सगळ्या वेवचे सगळ्या वेवचे जर क्रेस्ट एखाद्या सरफेसवरती जाऊन इन्सिडेंट होत असते तर त्यात करेल म्हणजे एका स्टेनला सेम फेज एकाच वेळेला सेम फेज एखाद्या सरफेसवरती जाऊन कलेक्ट होणं त्याला आपण वेव फ्रंट म्हणतो अ वेव फ्रंट इज द लोकल्स ऑफ पॉइंट हॅविंग द सेम फेज ऑफ ऑसिलेशन at certain time t okay at certain time t a line perpendicular to a wave front is called a ray perpendicular to wave front is called a ray spherical wave front from a point source this one is linear wave front cylindrical wave front from a linear source this is spherical wave front from a point source this is cylindrical wave front from a linear source and here is the plane wave front okay red line that is this is ray we are seeing okay this is wave front the locus of all the waves which are in same phase at certain time t is called wave front this is the point this wave front this is wave front these all are wave fronts okay so look u and the lap is wave front pink dots are wavelets and okay? pink dots this one they are acting as a source of secondary waves they will act as source of secondary waves okay so it is defined as per hygiene's secondary wave front theory yeah hygiene's construction or a hygiene's principle of secondary wavelets every point on this every point on uh, every point on the wave front will act as a source of secondary radiation every point on the wave front will act as source of secondary wave fronts that is hygiene's principle of secondary wavelets here is the source from which you are getting the spherical wave front is just propagating by following this ray optics then when the phase phase of this wave is reaching here okay when the crest is to trough a stone alternate crest and trough will form uh, one wave the distance in between two successive crest and troughs are called wavelength lambda you are known better no so when we are just confirming what is the phase at this place phase at this place phase at this place of the waves propagating from this source no all the points are same that any point if you are choosing the phase of individual wave will be same okay so this is called wave front and again what happens a free point on this wave front will act as a secondary wave front when the original wave front has source person generate sala sala matta primary primary source of energy primary source of radiation 
आणि इथून जे पॉइंट आपण चेक करतोय त्यांना आपण म्हणतो इट इज द सोर्स ऑफ सेकंडरी वेवफ्रंट नेक्स्ट Each point on front acts as a fresh source of disturbance of light. When they, if the light generates any, if they are incident any, for a third person, until second reverberates generates any, right? Each point on the front acts as a fresh source of disturbance of light. The new wave front at any time later is obtained by taking the forward envelope. of all the second reflects at that time backward wave front is rejected why amplitude of second reflects is proportional to half into 1 plus cos theta obviously for the backward wave front theta equals to 180 degree and 1 plus cos theta is zero obviously next one laws of reflection at plane surface explain by using hygiene's principle the reflections are or refractions are on law he kashani atta any explanation kilo tar hygiene's principle ma yacha mate aplala booster's law milto marus law milto kiwa tumche interference formula mi arctic fraction ch formula milta ani he sagle formula thodas vaste thodas vaste pan apan je formula important te take karto लिहून घेतल्या आणि त्यानुसार आपण त्याला फोकस करूया ठीक आहे सो दिस एक्सप्लेनेशन गिवन बाय हायजिन ऍज पर हिज थिअरी नेक्स्ट लॉज ऑफ रिफ्रॅक्शन ऍट द प्लेन सरफेस अगेन इट इज एक्सप्लेन विथ द हेल्प ऑफ हायजिन प्रिन्सिपल for rays of light from different parts for rays of light for different different parts on the incident wavefront the values of af are different but light for different points of the incident wavefront should take place at the same time i have same phase and same time ashe je points astat ekhada surface var che thik hai त्या सरफेसला आपण काय म्हणतो तर व्यवफ्रंट म्हणतोय अगेन जस्ट द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ इंटरफिअरन्स अँड डिफ्रॅक्शन फॉर इज इंटरफिअरन्स इंटरफिअरन्स इज दॅट फिनॉमिना दॅट फिनॉमिना वेअर लाईट प्लस लाईट लाईट प्लस लाईट वेव प्लस वेव लाईट प्लस लाईट इज आयदर मॅक्सिमा ऑफ इंटेन्सिटी ऑर मिनिमा ऑफ इंटेन्सिटी okay the modification in the modification in the intensity the modification in the value of intensity at the location of superposition of two waves as per the lo- location superposition of these two waves is called the interference phenomenon In simple language man is anke interference is simply light plus light light plus light is either maxima of intensity or minima of intensity provided conditions kay bhaga provided the conditions are in order to observe the interference phenomena we should have sources must be coherent sources must be coherent sources must be monochromatic sources must be very close to each other sources must be of equal intensity ya he ikadcha purcha slides madhe ahe sagla te apan sangla rakhot theek hai okay so in simple language we have defined light plus light is either maxima of intensity or minima of intensity manje that those waves propagate that and if they propagate both as the na kya eka location la jor ek mikana superimpose jaya tar kya location la alternately maxima and minima produce hoto 
आणि त्यामुळे त्यांच्या रिझल्ट इंटेन्सिटीवरती फरक पडतो डिपेंड्स ऑन सुपरपोझिशन थिअरम सुपरपोझिशन थिअरम से दॅट इफ वाय वन अँड वाय टू आर द डिस्प्लेसमेंट ऑफ इंडिव्हिज्युअल वेव्ह देन द रिझल्ट displacement is to be given in terms of y equals to y1 plus y2 and y equals to y1 minus y2 that means if crest of one wave overlaps with crest of another wave then we can obtain the maximum of intensity and alternate is the case when crest of one wave overlaps with trough of another wave then it produces minima of intensity we words are common that they may use the use the words bright band maximum of intensity or constructive interference example madhe constructive interference manta ki wa condition for bright band manta ki wa condition for maxima of intensity any words are in ink same okay so what is the condition of constructive interference what is the condition of destructive interference that also we will speak condition for constructive interference says that if path of difference in between two waves if the path of difference in between two waves propagating through a media is an integral multiple of lambda is an integral multiple of lambda then we can find the condition for constructive interference which leads to obtain the bright band that is called the condition for maxima of intensity and alternate is the condition that is called destructive interference condition for dark band and condition for minima of intensity again in the next lecture we are going to continue for continue for what is the difference between interference and diffraction okay so these are some um, future plans that are required to clear at the time of solving number of problems okay okay thank you very much thank sorry thank you very much